session on digital photography management. I know you can barely stay in your seats. It's pretty exciting <laughs> stuff. I know, I know. <clears throat> I had uh, done a, uh, my first one was an intro, and then I did a basic, an intermediate, and an advanced. The last two times, uh, sorry, yeah, the last two, you know, the basic and the intermediate, I had covered about three or four major topics. Today, I'm going to cover, in the advanced session, one topic. And I'm going to try to be candid, but that's not the main point here. One topic, and I, I alluded to this in both of my previous ones. When it comes to advanced digital photography organization, there is only four letters. And I think some people have been probably already guessed what that is. Is it a date? Data. 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 Yeah. All right. Good stuff. That's what it's about. That's all it's about. There's nothing else. Unfortunately, data does take a little bit of work. But I'm going to show later on tonight how it doesn't have to take all that much work and effort. But with the intermediate session, I pointed out that Everyone here at this table who are taking digital photos, and it's, which is most of us, are likely going to have five to 10,000 images in their collection. If they don't have it already, in a couple of years they will. How do you, you can't organize any of 10,000 of anything without a little effort, a little patience, and a little discipline. And the data route is a pretty, pretty easy one. Now, I'm going to, Take a photo. It's a, it's a speech on digital photography. You should be able to take a photo, right? So everybody, smile, please. It should work. I should turn it on. <laughs> it's not my first time, but you know, I, uh, it always catches us, doesn't it? How do I find that one photo five or 10 years from now when, as you know, I've got 59,000 images in my collection. How do I find it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have 110 by then. You know how I do it? When I get home tonight, I'm going to do a couple things with that one. I'm going to key in to, into the keyword section of that image file, Toastmasters. I want to do something as simple as typing in Memorial and St. John's. Many years from now, when I want to find an image, that photo, right? if I just simply type in Toastmasters, Memorial, or St. John's, right? I'm going to be able to find it, aren't I? What else could I do? How many folder things could I do? What kind of software and fuzzy logic thing could I do and use? And all I have to do is, is that, right? It's all about advanced photo organization being able to find your images later on is all about data. The reason why our timing is a, is a bit complex, not convoluted, just complex tonight is I'm going to, I was, I'm going to break it up into three sessions, uh, three portions here. Thank you, Pam. Uh, I'm going to just have a, this talk on data. I'm going to do a four-minute demo over here just now, and then we're going to have a two-minute question and answer period. Okay. By the way, this book here is the damn book, is the digital asset management book. Um, there's no N at the end. <laughs> um, the good thing there's no networking involved in this book. Um, now, I have a fairly large collection, so what I have to do is I have to I actually have this separate drive in here to keep my images. That's a 1.5 terabyte drive. If anybody knows anything about storage, they will know that that's a fair bit. So what I'm going to do here now is 
I'm going to go into pieces of software. I'm going to, last, last time I spoke about three pieces of software that you might potentially use for organizing your images and using data and such. Well, I picked my favorite one, which is the one that I wrote and, and sell fairly regularly. And that is called, now I'm going to kind of just stand right about here, but still look at you all. It's called DB Gallery. And DB Gallery is built from the very foundation on data. It does other things. It has, it supports things like GPS. When I was in Ontario a couple of weeks ago, I picked up this neat little device that plugs into the top of my, um, my flash uh, gadget here. And it, every, time I, every, time I, every time I take a photo, it stamps the image with the GPS location. Wow. Is that nice? Yes. That's what you call data, right? You don't have to necessarily key all this data. This one now has the latitude and longitude. Facial recognition is, is coming very quick, and so is object recognition. So, here I am. Let's see here now. Where are we? I'm going to do a few... I'm going to do just a couple of things in here. I have a bit of a script, but I don't have much time. This was... This actually is a, is a two-hour demo. Oh, clean the airflow. Oh, good. <laughs> that will... Sorry. That will clear itself in a two second, in, a, in half a minute. Half a minute? Okay. Give you extra time. Great. <laughs> So as you can see here on the bottom, see I have actually, I don't have 59, I've only got 58,000 images in my collection here. But I happen to have been to other Toastmasters clubs over the years. Oh, you're right, Alan. Thank you. <laughs> it's gone. So if I do, if I do that, I'm missing a bunch of images. And you know why I'm missing a bunch of images? Is because I'm not, I'm not connected to the internet right now. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of trouble to work around not having the internet. And I don't know if I'm going to have time to do it right now, unfortunately. So our demo might be, might be out. I'm going to do it without showing the, the images, unfortunately. Because these, these do, I do have to have internet access to be able to do this. Um, these are Toastmasters. I think I might actually have the thumbnail image of it at least, okay? So here, this is, this is Toastmasters in Oshawa. Right? And that was, that was taken back in, oh, there's no date and time on this one, unfortunately. I think back, back then the cameras didn't do timestamps very well. But I was able to find them, and here, now we have one that's from here. That's Lee speaking, right? And, you know, the, oh, there, that's, that's a nice one. Too bad, we can't see the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and here is, so, at least you know, that, that photo from Oshawa Toastmasters was, um, that would have been approximately nine and a half years ago. So, and, and I, was able, I was able to find it extremely easy, wasn't I? So the secret is there's no way to organize a large collection of images without some work. Getting used to data and keying in data in some kind of piece of software is how to do it. And the thing about it is, it doesn't matter if you use DB Gallery or Lightroom or ACDC or many of the other ones, that data gets put in your file itself. So as that file moves around, your data stays there. The GPS latitude and longitude. It just it just stays with the photo. Upload it to Flickr, and that's what you've got. You have the data forever. Any questions? Kevin. I work on a Mac. Uh-huh. So when I save photos in either PSD file or TIFF or JPEG, yeah. is there a way and I I know you have it here with your system, but is there a way on an individual photo that I can actually write those notes? Is that where the notes Absolutely. go? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, the notes and the keywords and 50 other kinds of mm -hmm. you know, pieces of data can just, if you go into Photoshop or any of the Adobe's photo tools, mm -hmm. it's on their file and info, and you can key it in there. Okay. If you key it in there on a Mac, 
and you transfer that file to a PC or a Linux, yeah. it's still with the image. So when you put it in your system, same thing. That it goes into that place. Tran so that's tra where you transfer yeah. it to a Mac, okay. and it's still there. It's yeah. actually, actually in an industry standard uh, metadata portion of that JPEG file. The JPEG file is not all about image. These days, people complain because they say, oh, there's as much data in my image as yeah. there is in an image. <laughs> Ellie. One of the easiest way I find is if you have a whole group of picture, you highlight them all and then change the file name to Toastmaster 2011 May 25th, then the whole group will be under that name too, right? That's a, and yeah. then each picture will have number 0021, 0022. Well, it's a very old fashioned way to do it. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I mean, back, back, back before metadata tools are more commonly available, that's what you might do. Yeah. Now, inside a DB gallery, I just select all my images, say from a trip to Paris and just choose them on and say edit data mm -hmm. and in the keywords I type in Paris. Mm -hmm. The problem with file names is you've only got a little bit of room. Mm -hmm. And then if I do it the other way with using a metadata editor like, like BB Gallery mm -hmm. or almost every other piece of software has it these days anyway, mm -hmm. is um, you, can, you can key in as many keywords and author and subject and, and year and all this kind of thing. Okay. So it's much better to use metadata. Thank you, Pam. I'm going to take one more question before I get clapped down or beaten down or something. Uh, that GPS unit, yes. um, how much do they cost? I got this one. I walked in at the right day, I tell you. Because it was 250 bucks and I got it for $140 at hand. And will they let fit on any camera that got a, yep. and a flash? It will. It? Yep, it will. And it just, when, as soon as you press the shutter, it will record the latitude line? Like that. That's right. Now, I didn't, mention, I didn't mention that what you have to do afterwards is right, you take your your GPS system, you take your card, plug both of them into your computer, and what it does is it actually uses the timestamps to match them up and write the data to the actual images themselves. That's how it works. DB Gallery is beautiful. I was out to um, Spaniards Bay on the weekend. Took pictures all over the place. Came back and I wanted to have the internet today so I could show you on, uh, on DB Gallery. Right on a little, pretty little map. The thumbnails of every location that I had visited over the weekend. So now I have all the data, I can find them easily, and I can see exactly where they were on the map. Data for photos is a beautiful thing, Mr. Toastmaster.